the Chinese car companies are the most competitive car companies in the world. Um, so I think they will have significant success uh, outside of China, uh, depending on what kind of tariffs or trade barriers are established. Uh, frankly, I think if, if, if there are not trade barriers established, they, they will pretty much demolish <laughs> most other car companies in the world. So they're, they're extremely good. Western car makers are already battling each other for a slice of the EV market, but now they've got an even bigger challenge, China, with its aggressive push into the industry. Recently, the European Commission kicked off an investigation to slap tariffs on cheaper Chinese EVs, claiming these cars are getting a boost from government subsidies. EU President Ursula von der Leyen pointed out that global markets are being flooded with these lower-priced Chinese electric cars, and their prices are artificially low because of massive state support. On the other side of the pond, President Joe Biden has also jumped in, announcing a jaw-dropping 100% tariff on Chinese-made EVs. But here's the real question. Are Chinese EVs actually cheaper because of government help, or is the West just trying to protect its own auto industry by hitting Chinese cars with sky-high tariffs? We're diving into that in this video, but before you continue, don't forget to hit that subscribe button to show your support. Protectionism in the West According to the International Energy Agency, Chinese EVs are already dominating, making up 60% of global sales. While you can find some Chinese EV models in Europe, they haven't hit the U.S. market yet. The closest place where Americans can buy Chinese EVs is Mexico. And guess what? They're cheaper there, too. This has the U.S. on edge, leading President Biden to slap a 100% tariff on Chinese EV imports. We're going to protect the American auto worker, Biden said, in an interview with Yahoo Finance after announcing the new tariffs. He claims these tariffs are meant to stop China from flooding the market with their EVs and putting everyone else out of business. Biden believes companies like Ford and General Motors need protection because China has quickly become a global powerhouse in EV production, thanks to big government investments, cheap labor, and access to key minerals. Chinese automakers have managed to create a range of EVs that match U.S. quality but sell for way less. For Biden, EVs are a key part of transitioning to green energy and fighting climate change. To help Americans make the switch, he pushed Congress to pass bills with big subsidies for EVs and billions for building charging stations across the country. But here's the catch. EV adoption in the U.S. has been slow and even seems to be stalling. One big reason? American EVs are expensive. Last year, the average EV in the U.S. cost over $55,000, with the cheapest ones still around $30,000. Meanwhile, in China, you can grab a popular EV for about $12,000, and some budget models are even cheaper than an e-bike. These low prices have caused a boom in EV sales in China, with more new EVs registered there last year than in the rest of the world combined. BYD, China's top EV company, has even surpassed Tesla to become the biggest electric car producer on the planet. So far, very few Chinese EVs have made it to the US, partly because of an existing 25% tariff. With the new 100% tariff, the price of Chinese EVs in the US would double if they ever tried to enter the market. This situation puts Biden in a tough spot, Letting Chinese EVs into the U.S. could really boost the country's green transition, but it might also crush the American auto industry and lead to massive job losses. Biden's stance is clear. He thinks the threat from Chinese EVs is bigger than the potential climate benefits. He's not alone. U.S. automakers, their workers' unions, and even former President Trump agree that there's just no way for American companies to compete with China right now. Supporters of the tariff argue that the U.S. needs more time to build a domestic EV industry that's strong enough to compete globally. But critics think 
Biden is sacrificing his climate goals and keeping affordable EV options out of reach for Americans just to save Detroit from its own mistakes. They worry that protecting U.S. automakers from real competition will only make things worse in the long run, causing the U.S. to fall behind the rest of the world. Why are Chinese EVs so competitive? A lot of people assume that China became the biggest market for EVs because of government subsidies, but plenty of other countries have similar policies and didn't see the same success. China's in the top five for high EV sales globally. Norway leads the pack with over 80% of its car sales being electric in 2022, followed by Iceland at 41%, Sweden at 32%, the Netherlands at 24%, and then China at 22%. What's really impressive is that China has the largest car market in the world. China actually started its EV journey later than the US, and while both countries offered similar incentives, Chinese companies took a different route. For example, did you know China kicked off its EV transition with electric buses and motorcycles? Buses are big, heavy, and carry a lot of people, operating for about 18 hours a day. They need powerful batteries that take longer to charge. By focusing on electric buses, Chinese EV maker BYD pushed battery technology to new heights as early as 2009. Then there's Geely, which started with electric motorcycles. These need lighter, more portable batteries and are cheaper to make. Plus, they're easier for consumers to get on board with, quickly replacing gas-powered bikes. Starting with electric motorcycles had two big benefits. It got the public more used to the idea of electric vehicles, and it catered to lower-income people. As China's economy grew, people who were using electric motorcycles wanted to upgrade to cars, and naturally, they chose electric cars. This approach made Chinese consumers more comfortable with EVs over traditional gas vehicles. On top of that, China's EV industry benefits from being close to key raw material supplies. In 2022, China accounted for 70% of global rare earth production, which is crucial for batteries. This gives Chinese battery companies a strong position in the supply chain, helping them develop new battery tech and strike better deals with suppliers. While China doesn't have the biggest natural resources for battery materials, it does have most of the world's refining capacity for key components like cobalt, nickel sulfate, lithium hydroxide, and graphite. Subsidies alone aren't enough to create a thriving EV industry. China's success is driven by smart products, high demand, and effective government policies that have allowed it to outpace the US and Europe. That's why Chinese EVs are so competitive. Reports suggest that slapping tariffs on Chinese EVs isn't the way to go. A smarter move would be to boost domestic manufacturing with subsidies, which is already happening in the US through the Inflation Reduction Act and bipartisan infrastructure law, as well as in Europe with targeted subsidies. A race to provide subsidies, combined with stronger efforts to price carbon emissions, is a much better option than a tariff war. This approach could lead to a richer and cleaner world overall. So what do you think? Is the West right to try and contain China's rise in the EV industry with tariffs? Should they keep protecting their auto industry from global competition? Share your thoughts in the comments below. If you enjoyed this video, hit the like button and don't forget to subscribe to our channel for more content like this.